Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Early Parenting Podcast. You're listening to episode 26. I hope you all had an amazing Christmas and New Year's and welcome to 2020. So I'm kicking off my first episode of the new year and season two of the Early Parenting Podcast by talking about one of the most frequently asked questions I get, and that, my friends, is catnapping. So today's episode will explore what catnapping is and what causes it and why it is an issue. Welcome to the Early Parenting Podcast, where we help you navigate the somewhat tricky world of parenthood so you can love the crap out of being a mum. I'm your host, Jen Butler, and I'm an early parenting consultant and a mama of two busy boys. Join me as I explore all things early parenting and deliver them to you in toddler-friendly, bite-sized lessons, because let's be honest, your toddler is probably smothering pseudo-cream on the wall as we speak. I'll be dropping my hottest tips on baby and toddler sleep, feeding, boobs, behavior, and so much more. Are you ready to find your flowing motherhood? Let's dive in. This episode is brought to you today by my free clean sleeping guide that I have on my website. You can access this baby at www.jenniferbutler.com.au. Now, guys, this guide is the first step I take parents through when I'm looking to help them improve their baby or toddler's sleep. You are literally getting free access to the first pillar of my triple C approach that I use to improve baby and toddler sleep. So head on over and download yourself a copy today. jenniferbutler.com.au forward slash clean dash sleeping. Okay, let's get into today's episode. Okay, first up, what is catnapping? So catnapping is the term that's used to describe baby and toddler nap lengths of around 30 to 40 feet of around 30 to 45 minutes max in length. Catnapping offers only one sleep cycle to a baby or toddler, and more often than not, this one sleep cycle simply isn't enough to revive your tired baby. This leads me to the why. Why is catnapping an issue? So a baby who is waking from a nap tired isn't going to feed well. They won't be happy during their awake time and chronic catnapping leads to an overtired baby. And when your baby or toddler isn't getting the sleep they need during the day, this can cause frequent night wake-ins and a whole host of other issues into the night. So what causes catnapping? So most catnapping cases can be broken down into five key areas. The first of these is environment. So this is looking at where your baby or toddler is sleeping. An environment that is conducive to sleep will help to link your baby's sleep cycles if set up correctly. So the environmental factors you need to consider are how noisy the environment is in where they're sleeping, how dark the room is and whether that's impacting on their ability to fall asleep and stay asleep. And also how warm your baby is or your toddler is when they're going down for a nap. So the second area that we look at is eating. So basically hungry babies or toddlers won't nap well. In this day and age where feed, play, sleep is encouraged to all families and to all babies and toddlers, it fails to take into account individual baby and toddler nutritional needs. You can't expect a long nap from a baby who needs a feed during their designated nap time. Making sure your baby is nice and full before they go down for a sleep can really help with consolidating naps. The next area is appropriate awake times. So both an undertired and an overtired baby will both lead to catnapping. So I did an episode on average awake times and tired signs back 
in earlier episodes, so I suggest you check those episodes out to get an idea of what a perfect nap time may look like for your babe. When your baby should nap varies from child to child, so if you need an extra hand in getting to know your baby's flow, make sure you get in touch with me. So the next area is settling. What you need to ask yourself here is, how is my baby or toddler falling asleep? Is what they have when they fall asleep there when they go through a sleep cycle? If the answer is no, this is where you may have work to do. If a baby or toddler needs someone or something to settle them to sleep, they'll need it again to link the next sleep cycle. And the final area that impacts catnapping is development. There is a huge developmental component to catnapping. When our little babes are learning a new skill, their brains are way too switched on, which can often see catnapping rear its head. If your baby's busy learning and practicing new skills, their sleep may seem to regress during these periods of progression in development. Likewise, babies between five to six months are learning to consolidate their sleep cycles. Likewise, babies before the age of five to six months are learning to consolidate their sleep cycles. So sometimes it is simply a time thing that sees catnapping improve. Usually, babies over the age of six months who are chronically still having sleeps of 45 minutes or less, this is where it's beyond just developmental and looking into some of the other causes can be really useful. It's important to note, guys, that sometimes the reason your baby is catnapping is because of a mixture of these things. So sometimes it's about looking in each of the areas to troubleshoot what you can do to try and help consolidate sleep. But if you're having trouble finding out what it is that is causing the catnapping, it's better off to speak to someone like myself who has the skills to be able to pick apart and see more clearly what area might need to be worked on. So make sure if this is something that's going on and you you think that these short naps are impacting your baby or your toddler, make sure to get in touch. Anyway, guys, I hope that that has been useful. I know that catnapping is experienced by so many families and while there is massively a part of it that improves as your baby gets older, there's certainly things that you can do to help to consolidate these sleep cycles so they're not always so overtired and, you know, we all know how that impacts feeding and the rest of your day. So I hope that's been helpful and I will join you back here next week with a brand new episode. So I'll catch you then, mama. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please head on over to your podcast streaming app, whether that's Apple or Spotify, and leave me a review. I want this podcast to get to as many ears as possible so that other mums who might be having the same questions as you can find a little bit of information to help their parenting journey along. And you know what? While you're over there leaving a review, please feel free to subscribe so you don't miss a single one of my episodes. And don't forget to hit me up on my socials, Facebook and Instagram, at Jem Butler Early Parenting. Can't wait to bring you your next episode. I'll see you back here again then.